Welcome back to the channel. We have been recapping a lot of Tia's story, her relationship with Corey, co-parenting, the transition as she calls it, okay? Now we're gonna get into this episode, but I also wanna talk a little bit about this ET interview that she did a couple weeks ago because it really shed a lot of light on her healing journey and where she is in her life. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. You can always leave me some supers, but make sure you hit that like, you leave me some comments and support the channel because I love y'all and y'all love me, but I need to see some of that love coming up in these, <laughs> these videos. Now, okay, let me give a shout out to one of my loyal subscribers, EJ, emailed me about this interview and I was like, oh, y'all really appreciate me. You took the time out of your schedule to email me and send me the link to this interview Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I watched the episode, okay, and a lot of it was like dry. It was a little dry, this one, okay? She talks a little bit about having her daughter go into being um, a child star. Does she really want that? Yada, yada. She also talks about co-parenting, and she's still dating this guy, Charles. But I really want to focus more on the ET interview because it gave us a lot of insight about her as a person, where she is, and how we are all on this healing journey trying to reach our inner child and heal that little person inside of us. Now, she calls her divorce her transition, okay? The D word to her is very heavy. And I want to know from you guys who have been through divorce, who have been through relationships that have ended and you have kids, at what point do you introduce your partner to your children? Is it a year, like they said in the episode, one of the friends said, is it a short amount of time? And do you think about the implications of introducing a new person into your child's life and that person getting attached, your child getting attached, and then one day y'all break up and your child is like, oh, what happened to Charles? Mama, where Charles at? Well, baby girl, Charles went to get some cigarettes and he never came back. <laughs> But in this ET interview, she very much talks about where she is in her life. And once again, I've talked about how for the first time in her life, I think Tia is choosing herself, okay? She's trying to choose herself while co-parenting under the limelight. Everywhere she goes, people ask her about Corey, okay? What's your family situation like? And the interviewer, she does a very good job of respecting boundaries, but getting our questions answered. Okay, so some of the things she talked about was where she is today and about the show. So this is, in Tia's words, her real authentic, authentic self. She's being herself. Now, when it comes to, um, you know, her and Corey, all right, they're trying to co-parent. And is it easy? No, she admits it's not easy, but they're trying to figure it out. They're trying to figure it out for her kids. And the biggest reason we found out that her son does not want to be on the show is because of the topic of the show, life after divorce. Now, imagine being the child of a celebrity, okay? You're already, your face is already out there. People know so much about you. You don't even know the internet knows about you. Half of y'all be like, we your internet uncles and aunties, and that can scare a child, okay? So the reason we're not seeing him, primarily from his mother's words, is because she doesn't believe he wants to talk about the divorce. And I can understand that. Everybody's in your face with a camera. So about your mom and your dad. And sometimes I saw in an interview where they actually played where Corey and him were at the BET Awards and he's standing there. And one of the interviewers asked him about his ex-wife, Tia, who's his mom. And I just have to think about as a child, everywhere I go, somebody has asked about my parents' divorce. Okay, I'm just standing there minding my own business, trying to enjoy my life, have a good time. And y'all keep bringing up my parents' divorce already. At the time, he was, what, 11 when they divorced? He's 13 now. Imagine that. Everywhere you go, they want to know about your mama and your daddy divorcing. And you're trying to get away from that. And now your mom has a show also talking about that. I, I appreciate the fact that she respects his boundaries enough to know. And as a mother, it's okay. You don't have to be on the show. I will respect that. There are a lot of parents out there who I don't care. This is my house. I pay the bills. This show is getting us a check. And you're going to get on there. You're going to smile and act nice. But Tia, I think, is trying to, in some ways, heal her own inner, ch inner child through her children. And I think a lot of parents do that. I think, from what I have seen, 
it looks like she's doing it in a very healthy way, respecting boundaries, maybe giving to her kids what she didn't get from her own mother. Because as we heard in the episode and on this ET interview, that her mother was her manager. And I have to only imagine the lines were very blurred at times. In this instance, are you my mom acting for me? Are you my business manager making decisions for me? Which one is it? It just seems very like convoluted to have someone that you love be in charge of your business, but you need that mom. And Tia talks about in the interview, trying to heal from her traumas, trying to take accountability for the role that she has played in her traumas in her life. See, that is a part of healing that nobody talks about. We talk about healing from parental wounds, different things that have happened to you. But what about the self-accountability? So many people are afraid to turn that mirror on themselves and think about how did I contribute to where I am today? Okay. And some people might say, what do I have to do with the things that have happened to me? And I'm not saying that it's your fault. I'm just saying we all make decisions in the role that we play in our lives and how we got to where we are today. And it's important as you're going on your healing journey to self-reflect and think about how did I contribute to some of the things of I'm not liking about myself, some of the decisions I made that I am healing from. It takes a lot of vulnerability and a lot of strength to recognize my fault. And most people don't want to. It's a lot easier to walk around and blame everybody else. Well, my mama gave me up. My daddy wasn't around. I can't help that my daddy wasn't around. I can't help that my mama wasn't around. But as an adult, some of the things you do as a result of that parental wound, you have made some decisions. You have made some choices. And some people choose to heal. Some people choose to work through those things while other people continue to run away and mask use people, places, and things to fill themselves with joy, happiness. Try and put a bandaid on that wound of your parents through relationships and things like that. So I want you to think about what is the role you have played in some of your traumas. And Tia, to me, is taking some accountability and looking at and healing, knowing that healing is a lot of self-reflection, a lot of whew, sitting with it, holding space for myself. I often talk about on this channel holding space for other people, but how often do you hold space for yourself and what does that look like? It feels like Tia is trying to hold space for herself, but the internet is so into lies, sensationalism, that that doesn't matter. We don't care that you're healing. We don't care that you're on your journey. We don't care about mental health. Why you and Corey break up? Okay, what happened there? Why'd you give up that good man? Okay, did you get tired of being a wife? And she talks about that in the interview also. The stories and sensationalism, all of that. And she understands that no matter what, people are going to talk. Okay, she also talked about her relationship with her sister. Now, some of it you might say was a little bit of um, being nice not saying anything bad. So you might feel like she may not have been telling the truth, but she basically said that they're both women. Um, Tamara has responsibilities with her children and she's trying to be there with her kids and live her own life. It felt a little bit uh, media trained. Here's a media training, okay? It wasn't really the true tea. It was what she wanted to say. And how she said that, I was like, oh, you being nice. You telling the people a nice little sugar-coated, version of what is really going on. Will we ever know what's going on with her and her sister? Who really knows, okay? Is it really our business? Probably not. Half of y'all be falling out with y'all siblings, okay? But continue to let them treat you bad because you're a people pleaser, because you were conditioned to let people treat you wrong. But in this instance, it's, it seems like they are not allowing each other to be treated bad by one another. And that's what the truth of the matter is. Okay, that they probably both have said some things, done some things, made some decisions about where they are right now. But one day, maybe things will get better. But right now it is what it is. And I think it's also years of being next to another person. Imagine like she's been next to her sister since utero. Okay, she's been next to somebody. There are going to be times where you have disagreements. There are going to be times when... The business gets intertwined and mixed up with the sisterhood. 
that business decisions were made over the sisterhood. Probably times where the mama got in the way of them being sisters because of business dealings. All of that, all of that trauma. But instead, we were focused so much on well, why y'all not, why y'all not talking? What's the tea? We just want the tea. The internet is so consumed with the tea of everything. They don't want to hear the real version. They just want the sensationalized version because the lies are way more entertaining than the truth. The truth can be just like they fell out. Sisters fall out. I'm sure half of y'all have experienced some of this stuff, but you're not celebrities. But people are so focused on, we just want the tea. We don't care about nothing else. We don't care you're on your healing journey, them kids. What happened with you and Corey? What about your sister? How come they wasn't on the show? What about you and Charles? Who are you dating? Okay. All of that. Nobody cares about what's really happening in people's lives. They want to be able to focus on picking at and pointing at different things of other people's lives because that's way more entertaining and distracting from working on myself and focusing on my own problems. Especially on the internet, girl. You got these people, these internet gangsters, okay? Keyboard gangsters with their avatars, their fake photos, okay? Get to show up as anybody they want to because on the internet, you can have control over people. The control that you are missing in your personal life on the internet I can be who I want to be. I can say what I want to say. Now, all the stuff I say to you online behind that keyboard, I probably could never say it to my own friends, my own husband, my own sister, my own kids. But this avatar, this keyboard, I have control. I have the life I want to. That is not my real life in reality. And it's good to see that Tia is not focused on what people are saying. I think then I'm sure there are times she reads the comments, she gets caught up in all that. We all do at times, but it's good to see her healing on her healing journey. Now, she also talks about another child because in the show, this medium, did y'all notice that the medium from this show, I believe was the same medium that was on the Braxtons? Did y'all peep game? Or was I wrong? It looked like it was the same person. But it seems like the medium was actually wrong. Okay, now the medium said that she sees another child coming into um, Tia's life. Tia says she asked her kids, y'all want a sibling? They said, hell to the naw. Mm -mm -mm. Don't bring no other kids up in this house. And Tia, of course, is like, okay, my kids said no, so it ain't in the cars. But it also doesn't mean that her birthing a child can mean that whoever she decides to be in a relationship with might bring a child into the picture because at the age she is, Whoever she chooses who's close to her age, they probably gonna have some kids, a kid, a life before her. So it could also mean that too. Now she also talks about being remarried. She wants her next relationship to be private. I think she has learned about having public relations and how the internet is so influential and how they rip you apart. So she wants to have a private relationship. I kind of got the feeling that she actually might be in a relationship and she's just keeping it to herself. And also that the person is not Charles. Okay, let me know if you think that Charles was for TB, if you think it was really dating. I get mixed things about, is it for real? I don't really know, okay? But the interview was very enlightening. Thank you to EJ for sending me the link. It was way more entertaining to me than this interview. Um, sorry, than the episode. Way more insightful. I think this interviewer really knows how to get things out of the people she interviews. So kudos to you. But the episode itself was a little bit dry, okay? A little bit dry in some Old Bay, some garlic seasoning, some paprika, okay? Because all I, all I was getting was salt and pepper, okay? Maybe just salt, no pepper, okay? Who wants to eat a piece of chicken with just salt, okay? But I want to know your thoughts. What do you guys think of this episode? Have you watched the ET interview? Maybe I'll put it in the comments in the below, the description, so you guys can actually watch it. But we are seeing what it's really like to go through a divorce. It is not easy, okay? To and, and then you add children. She was with Corey for what, 22 years, I believe? Her first everything. So now Tia is in a space of self-discovery, healing. And part of healing is taking accountability and looking at yourself and seeing how you have contributed to where you are today and what are some things that you need to work on in order for you to be a better a better self, 
What is it that you need from you? And tapping into that little person. What is that little person inside of you still need that you can provide them? Okay, once again, that little person that you can provide for them, not other people, relationships, friends, okay? Expecting your friends to heal you from your parental wounds, to show up as your parents, have partners who are supposed to show up as your parent. You need to be able to tap in and figure out what do you need to provide that little person inside yourself so that you can heal and be a better version of yourself. Now, of course, we have our book club, How We Heal. I believe Wednesday, November 13th is going to be our first um, meeting live stream. Make sure you read part one because we're going to go over part one. Um, you still got about a week and a half to get the book, audio book, read it, highlight it. Okay, but make sure you let me know your thoughts because, of course, we will get into it while right on this channel. Make sure you like, you subscribe, you turn on that notification bell so you never miss one of my videos. And as a therapist, work on yourself, take some responsibility, pause. Sometimes just pause, don't keep going, 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 and know that things will get better. All right, I will see you on the next video. I'm about to go get in the bed. Bye.